friends and welcome to another bookish video. I had many plans for this video and none of them except for this one went as planned, but more on that later. First, if you have not already, I would like to invite you to make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea, grab your coziest of comfy blankets, you know how things go here, <laughs> and ooh, I want to cheers you. Cheers! Are you cheersing me? There we go. Cheers! Cheers to doing hard things. We can do hard things, you know? Cheers to being scared and doing the thing anyway. Mm. As you may have known if you watched my first video of this year, I made it my goal to not buy any new books, but rather read the books that I already own this year. And I also decided to ditch my numerical reading goal. So I am not endeavoring to read 50 books this year and I am trying, well, I'm determined to read books that I already own rather than buying new books. And this has proved to be challenging. There are just so, so many good books in the world and it is so exciting to own a new book. However, I have to remind myself that I already own new and exciting books and quantity does not matter. What matters is the joy and excitement I've felt around reading again. I guess I'm experiencing the opposite of a reading slump. I simply cannot stop reading. <laughs> I'm reading so much and it's totally okay if it fades away. Before we talk books, can I tell you guys a story? <laughs> I'm just gonna dive into it because <laughs> I'm actually sat here with my camera alone in my house. So I don't know if you've said yes or no, but I hope that you've said yes. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I have been experiencing a little bit of anxiety around being in front of the camera. And it honestly, it just feels like one thing after another in anxiety. I get over my anxiety over something and then it just pops up somewhere else. <laughs> And I love making videos. I absolutely love filming videos. I love editing videos. It is my passion. And so it just hasn't made sense why I'm feeling anxious when I go to try and make a video. However, the more that this happens, the better equipped I am to get through the anxious feelings, like the more that I'm faced with them and gradually overcome them the easier it becomes to overcome the anxious feelings when they pop up again. So, this week's video, I run a book club on my Patreon and every other month we vote on a book that we want to read as a group together in the book club. And this month there was an incredible selection of books and Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies won, so that's what we'll be reading over the next couple of months. And yes, I'm not buying books for myself. I'm reading only books that I own. However, every time we choose a book in my book club, I buy two copies of that book and gift them to patrons. I'll randomly select two people to mail the books to. And so, even though I'm not buying books for myself, I do occasionally get to go to Powell's, the bookstore, and peruse some books. <laughs> and purchase books as gifts for other people, which is exactly what I wanted to do in this video. Basically, I wanted to have a friend day at the bookstore, just enjoy exploring the bookstore without, you know, having to buy any books. I did pre-order two copies of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I had pre-ordered those, um, but I just wanted to, you know, be goofy and get lost in books with you guys at the bookstore and then go to a cozy cafe and do a bit of reading which sounds so fun and is something that i really genuinely do want to do and would have fun doing however when i tried to yesterday i felt so anxious i got so so anxious and i powered through it i gave myself a pep talk and I went to the bookstore anyway, only to discover upon arrival that I had forgotten my camera. Oh my goodness, you guys, I have just arrived at the bookstore, or rather across the street from the bookstore, 
only to realize that I forgot my camera. <laughs> I brought the spare battery and my portable tripod and I forgot the camera. <laughs> uh, this is some major self-sabotage going on right now. I have been facing my self-sabotage head on and forgetting to bring my camera is just a classic form of self-sabotage, I think, but I'm determined to make this video and so I will film on my phone and I think the quality will be fine. And I mean, filming on my phone is even more casual and therefore more fun, I think, so it could be a good thing. But as I said, I decided that I would push through and try filming on my phone and I walked into the bookstore and just couldn't do it. I tried but I just started to feel really panicky and uncomfortable and it just wasn't working. So I decided to leave and try again tomorrow. Fast forward to today. <laughs> today I was determined to make this video and I checked and double checked to make sure that I had everything that I needed and I made my way to Powell's blasting some Taylor Swift as one does when they're trying to get hype and not be anxious. So I arrived at Powell's and was feeling actually really good and excited to film. I was smiling to myself as I was secretly filming and then my camera screen lit up with an error message saying memory card error and just turned off. You guys, my memory card broke. <laughs> I brought my camera, my tripod, and a spare battery, but not a spare memory card. And so my memory card's broken and I now need to film this video on my phone. I'm gonna power through and have this day with you regardless. I apologize if the quality of filming is a little bit less than it usually is because I'm now filming on my phone. Rolling with the bunches, let's browse some books. This is new. There's always something new to be experienced here. I'm kind of scared of it. Okay, so we're in the red room, which is one of my favorite rooms in Powell's and my favorite section is the nature section. Plants, animals, insects, it's just all so fascinating and beautiful. I would love to have a nature diary. This book is precious. It's an actual diary with beautiful watercolors. Amazing. Wow. Down to the river and up to the trees. Discover hidden nature on your doorstep by Sue Belfrich. Mm, that's a beautiful cover. Intriguing. I have this book. I am endeavoring to learn the, board, the birds of Oregon. Honestly, it feels impossible. But it's fun to be curious. How trees can help you to find health and happiness. How I became a tree. 
And what a beautiful cover. This looks beautiful. I keep saying that, don't I? Everything's beautiful. I would love to be someone who forages. However, I just don't trust myself. I really don't trust myself. It's extremely difficult to properly identify like mushrooms and some edible plants. And I love the idea of it, but I don't think I could do it. <laughs> And it was going well, but before I could even hardly get into filming and get into Powell's, my phone filled up, the storage ran out or filled up. I, in short, couldn't take any more pictures or videos because I didn't have enough storage on my phone. To make a long story short, I had to give up. I had to leave Powell's and come home and make myself a heartwarming cup of tea because heartwarming cups of tea make everything better. Mm. I know that it's not a huge deal. I'm extremely fortunate to get to go to bookstores and film videos of myself at bookstores and to make a living off of that. I am very, very aware and grateful for the gift of my life. And as I've said before, I need to constantly remind myself, it's okay to have hard days and it is okay to struggle even if you have an amazing life. Always, your life or your life circumstances and situation is better compared to somebody else. There's always somebody suffering so much more than us. And I think that's important to recognize, to feel grateful for your life but not to guilt yourself for struggling or when you struggle. You know what I mean? In other words, there is such a thing as toxic positivity. So, <laughs> if you have had a hard time recently doing something that should be easy, that should be fun, my heart goes out to you. It is confusing to experience that. And if you did the thing despite your anxiety or your fear or your struggles. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. Or if you tried to do the thing and it just really, really wasn't good and you allowed yourself to step back and just have some space, I am just as proud of you for doing that. That is just as admirable, if not more. It can be so hard to take care of ourselves. Even as I say this, I feel silly but I think I'm meant to say it, or at least meant to share it, because I tried doing a different video. I gave it two big, good tries, and it just did not work out. The odds were not in my favor in that regard. So instead, we are sat here having this heart-to-heart. -heart. Thank you for being here with me as I work through it, and thank you for sitting here listening to me talk about it. Anyways, the thing is, you don't actually need a magical bookstore or a library to have a fun bookish get together with friends. You just need a book. And as you can see behind me, I happen to have many books. <laughs> so let's talk books. Mm, it's been a great reading year. I started my year with heaps of rom-com, <laughs> three books actually, The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, and Vanessa Yu's Magical Pears Tea Shop by Russell Lim. Those got me through my sick weeks in January, and I just couldn't be satiated with the rom-coms. I consumed them all so quickly, and it was wonderful. But <laughs> once I got better, I was kind of over the genre and craving something much more intense. And so I decided to read the second book, the second part of The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and oh my goodness, it did not disappoint. It wasn't nearly as fast paced as I thought it would be, but oh, Middle Earth is one of my favorite places to be. Whew, so much adventure. The Ents, the Ents, of course I would love the Ents. And Gimli! <laughs> Gimli was my unexpected favorite character while reading The Two Towers. He's absolutely hilarious. 
yet absolutely respectable. I find that the books are actually much more playful than the movies. I love both book and movie. However, I found myself much more relaxed while reading the book than I was while watching the movie. I think the slower pace has a lot to do with that. And I would describe reading Lord of the Rings akin to enjoying fine art, if you will. It's like, it's the experience of reading it is a joy. The story is incredible, but the writing is just so rich with detail. And the world building, I mean, <laughs> it's truly indescribable. And clearly the inspiration for so much fantasy that's followed. I'm curious to know who your favorite character is, if you've read The Lord of the Rings. I really like Gimli. I also love Samwise. Merry and Pippin are incredible too! Oh my gosh, Aragorn. Mm. I just sound like a fangirl, which I guess I must be. <laughs> I'm turning into a fangirl of The Lord of the Rings. It's pouring down rain now. It was sunny five minutes ago, and now it's pouring down rain. It might even be sleeting. I'm sorry that the lighting's gone all weird. It's the sun was here, and now it's not. It's the ideal ambiance for talking about books, you know, steaming cups of tea, pouring rain, streaming down the windows, cozy blanket in hand, and a heap of books at my feet. The next book that I read and really enjoyed was Life Through the 60s. I found this in a free little library in a video about two years ago and hadn't looked at it since. And then one night, Landon and I decided to just read it together and the experience of reading it together was amazing. But I found a great deal of unexpected comfort in this book. So basically, it's photographs over the decade of the 60s and a summary of what was happening in the picture. And it covers so much history from that time all over the world and I mean as you guys know things have been crazy in our world this decade I sometimes wonder has it always been this crazy or does it just feel like it's suddenly this crazy because I'm now an adult and I'm paying attention to what's going on in the world it's thundering we never get thunderstorms here Pause book talk. That sounded like book talk. This isn't book talk. This is book talk. That was exciting. The sun's out again. <laughs> this weather, spring is trying to take hold of winter and slowly beginning to win the battle. Go spring, who's ready for spring? It's been cold and snowy here. I'm usually so for this time of year. So, <clears throat> as I was saying, I wondered if this year, if this decade has been more chaotic than most, or if it only felt that way because it was the first time in my life that I was paying attention. And so, as one does, I asked my grandparents, and they said yes, it is definitely more chaotic than in the past. However, it feels to them like the 60s felt. And I have to be honest, there were, I'd say even the majority of this book was absolutely heartbreaking, like nausea inducing heartbreaking. It does not shy away from the ugly underbelly of humanity and all the hate and 
violence, racism, war, poverty, all of it <laughs> that was experienced in the 60s and still continues to be experienced to this day. It, it doesn't shy away from that, but right alongside that were the, the happier moments, the wins for humanity, generosity, music, art, peace times, people coming together, united under a beautiful cause. It's all, all of it is in here. And the unexpected comfort I felt was reassurance that yes, it's been this bad before and we've gotten through it. We've done worse than we're doing right now. And big parts of that were healed. So it gave me hope and was also just a really valuable impromptu history lesson. So I'm really glad that I picked this up out of a free little library and I feel I read it exactly when I needed to. Next, I read my favorite book of the year so far, which is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Ugh, you guys, this book was one of those books where when I wasn't reading it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And that, to me, is a good book, or at least one that I know that I love. This was my book club pick for the past two months, and I don't think I would have picked it up if not for my book club, but I'm so glad that I did, and I definitely plan on continuing in the trilogy. Whoops, a bag just fell. I definitely plan on continuing this trilogy when I allow myself to buy new books. The book centers around Brie, who has recently lost her mother. There's a very, very big presence of grief in this novel. In fact, a lot of people found that they couldn't read it or couldn't continue it if they had recently lost a loved one. This was the feedback that I received in my book discussion on Patreon about this book. And there are very real, deep themes that are explored in this book, such as racism and sexism and abuse and trauma and grief. But it's all a really important part of the story and I think is done in a very approachable way. It just felt very well-rounded everything about this book. The action was perfect <laughs> for me. I felt like it was very well paced, so this is a fantasy novel. There is a lot of action, but there's even spaces of character building time and story development between action, and a lot of the action I felt was exciting and interesting. It wasn't at all predictable and it felt very well timed. So that was great. Characters are so, so good. So good. And the magic, ooh, the magic. There's three, no, there's so many different types of magic in here. There's flood magic, root magic, super strength, super speed, a lot of it, but it all comes together really well and different groups of people have different relationships with magic or use magic in different ways and it's it was just I had never experienced something quite like this before and then of course the Arthurian legends the very very old mixed with the very very new and a fresh perspective on the legends with satisfying changes such as women in the bloodline of the knights female knights so yes a very thorough book. So well done. My mind was here even when I wasn't reading it, and I look forward to continuing the trilogy. Is it a Morgan Long bookish video if I don't mention a collection of Mary Oliver's poetry? I read Redford in the mornings last month, and as always, it was total medicine for my soul. Mm, so good. I feel like I'm saying that about every book. So good. But I have just really enjoyed reading this year. And I had one of those moments that was just incredible while reading this book one morning. And it's one of those moments where you come across a line that's famous and it's immediately familiar to you. And yet 
you feel like you're meeting it for the first time because you're reading it in its origin. <sighs> Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in this broken world. I beg of you, do not walk by without pausing to attend to this rather ridiculous performance. It could mean something, it could mean everything. It could be what Rilke meant when he wrote, you must change your life. Imagine reading that first thing in the morning. Imagine just reading that. You should read that. It's so good. The way that I read it is that, yes, our world is broken, but to wake up each morning is a gift and all it takes is a moment to pause and look at your life, to see that it is a gift and that an ordinary day can mean nothing, but it can also mean something. It can mean everything. All we have is this ordinary day. Literally all we have is this ordinary day, which is a gift even in this very broken world. Mm. The next book I enjoyed was actually an audiobook, and it's The Mountain Is You by Brianna Weist, I believe. Oh, this book I feel like I need to listen to at least four more times because it is jammed, packed with incredible information. And it basically centers around self-sabotage, which is something that I'm struggling with a lot. I believe that self-sabotage is at the root of my anxiety, actually. And so, I started this book and it took me a whole month to get through because even though it's a five hour audiobook, as I said, it's just packed with information and it felt, listening to this book felt like looking at myself in a mirror or rather it just helped me to see things so clearly. Um, my two biggest breakthroughs I had while reading this book were that I have wealth guilt, which is essentially when someone is used to not having any money, grows up without money, or has struggled with money for a very long time. If you've been here, you'll know that just four years ago, I was on the poverty line and just my whole life haven't ever had very much money. And um, wealth guilt is when someone goes from having no money to having money and feeling extremely guilty about it because they don't, they don't know how to have it or they somehow found security in relating to other people over not having it. It's really, really complex, but when I heard Brianna Weist explaining it, it felt like just such a a lifting of the shades, I don't know, it's just a big aha moment for me. And I feel like actually a lot of my self-sabotage is because I feel wealth guilt or I'm experiencing wealth guilt where I'm finally at a point in my life where I have money to afford the things that I need and then some and I don't know how to do that or how to be okay with that. And so I self-sabotage in a way that hurts me and hurts, the, hurts my financial success. Like, for example, developing extreme anxiety anytime I try and pick up a camera, which is the way that I make my money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was major and is definitely something that I will be digging into and researching and trying to heal and figure out. And then the other thing is that individuals have like core needs. Specifically for me, something she said, if in looking to your future or even your present day, something that's really important to you is being loved by others, is receiving love and, ex is receiving love and acceptance from others. If that's something that you hope for in your future, like is one of the first things you think about in feeling fulfilled in your everyday life, that's a core need. And if your core need is love and acceptance from others, actually what you need is love and acceptance from yourself. 
it's a symptom of you not loving yourself enough and not accepting yourself enough. And whoo, when she said that, uh, that one felt like an arrow to the heart. And it's so true in my case. It is so true. I am discovering that I actually have a, a very serious lack of self-love and acceptance for myself. And it's the root of so many of my insecurities and anxieties and self-sabotage and so on and so forth. So this book was literal therapy and one that I will return to many times over. And when my no buying new books term is up, I plan on buying a physical copy and taking all sorts of notes inside the book. And to conclude, I am actually taking a step back from the intense fantasy and am reading Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle Magorian. I've been reading this in the mornings and before bed, really slow going, just here and there. I'm only about halfway through and it's a very slow book, but in a very peaceful, heartwarming way, centered around an old man who's grown grouchy and lonely after the loss of his wife and child at a very young age and a poor boy who's been abused by his family and is afraid of everything as a result. They're paired together during World War II and um, also happen to live in a very small supportive community. So all those ingredients are quite heartwarming, but I do sense that this will break my heart. I think that this is gonna turn and absolutely break my heart at the end. But I'm willing to go there. I think it's worth it. And once I finish Goodnight Mr. Tom, next on my TBR is Sisters of Midnight, where sisters unite and darkness ignites. This is the third book in a trilogy. What's the trilogy called? What is it called? I can't find what it's called, but the first book is Sisters of Shadow, the second is Sisters of Moonlight, and the third is Sisters of Midnight. And Randy and I are actually reading this trilogy together, and she read this and finished it and is letting me borrow it, and we have thoroughly enjoyed them. Basically, this story is everything cozy. Catherine Livesey writes cozy so well in smells like maple sugar and steaming cups of tea, in sunlight flickering through the window, in big castles that are airy, but you have a cozy blanket wrapped around you, in grassy meadows, in angry oceans on the shore of a lighthouse, lost children band together and taking care of each other, magic, warm biscuits and cozy cooking, Yes, these are all ingredients in this book, in this trilogy, centered around two best friends who discover that they're actually witches. So if you have a friend that you enjoy reading with, I recommend reading this book with that friend because it's a fun friend book. And again, mostly cozy. The story isn't amazing, but it is just a fun book to escape into. And maybe this last book will be amazing. I've enjoyed the previous two, and I think the last one was Randy's favorite, so maybe it'll be mine. So friends, that is what I've been reading, and that is what I am reading. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for spending this time with me, for sitting here cozy on my couch with me, and for honestly enabling me to live this life. Thank you so much, a thousand times over, thank you. I have not forgotten the book nook, by the way, for those of you who are wondering. It just hasn't worked out that I finished it yet, but I am slowly working away at it and I plan to perhaps do a full video just focused on the book nook. A cozy video with peaceful music, just tinkering away, putting it together, and then the completed book nook. So there is still that to look forward to. I just don't know when it will be done because I am actually seriously taking the time to enjoy the process. I have talked for nearly an hour. 
and if you're anything like me, you probably just want to get to a book now. I always want to start reading when I hear people talking about reading. So now that we've had our very long chat, let's be real, it was just a very long monologue, and are equipped with our heartwarming tea, though mine's grown quite cold, <laughs> and our cozy blanket, let's grab a book and do some reading, and I will see you very soon. Big hugs. I love you. Happy reading.